All right, y'all, so I'm showing this video. This is a theft that happened at my house. You see the guy come up. You see the floodlight turn on, and it doesn't even phase them. I mean, these guys, these kids are bold, whoever this person is. Uh, you see them there being real quiet, and they got a hoodie on where you can't really see who they are. Uh, and he's looking at the equipment, and you look like you know exactly what he's trying to get. Uh, he grabs the, uh, this before I had the green touch racks. So he grabs a edger. It looks like off the top. And that was a red max edger. I had about a $550, $600 red max edger. They're top of the line one. he stands it up. It's methodical. See my heart's rate. My heart races every time I watch this video. So I'm like, Oh my God, what a violation y'all. So he says, so edge her down, stands it up right there, and then watch it almost falls when he grabs a weed eater. There's a weed eater in the rack, too. He gets the weed eater. Now he's going around to the front there to get the blower. Meanwhile, the floodlight's turning on and off and, you know, with the motion detector. Now he's trying to look at how to get the blower out of the trimmer trap rack. And he doesn't know how to get it out, which makes me think that it, Probably watch the edger start to fall here. See the edger. See there goes the edger. Look, he's look at the edger. He look, he grabs the edger, and uh, and then he's back trying to figure out how to get the blower out of the rack. So that's why I don't think it was anybody that worked for me because of this right here. If it was anybody that worked for me back then? Uh, they would have been very familiar with the rack and with the fact that I got cameras at my house and uh, I don't think this person knew I had cameras whoever this was so but you'll see he'll yeah he's trying to figure out the rack trying to figure out the rack and I'm sorry I didn't speed it up y'all but trying to talk through it and if he had just looked in the back of the white truck there he would have gotten uh, a couple of 201t chainsaws and a bicycle handle steel brush cutter he didn't even look in the back of the truck dodged a bullet on that one so now you see him getting all the stuff together he got the backpack blower on his back picking up the edger and then he's going to grab the weed eater and walked right down through my front yard, as you'll see. Yeah. And there he goes, walking off. The light comes back on. He walks right off, right off through my, right through my front yard. Where my shit, y'all. That's my stuff. But boy, my heart rate just look racing just looking at that. So since then, I have put floodlights in the front. I got a, a, a light that comes on, dusted on, two dusted on lights. So just wanted to share this with you guys to kind of show y'all why I think. Like I think sometimes. So I was wondering, man, uh, so what do you guys do to prevent theft of your equipment, like, at nighttime? Do you guys, uh, you know, take the equipment inside? Do you guys, uh, you know, leave a, a part of the trailer in a, in a good, secure spot? Every night I put my equipment inside everything. I don't leave nothing out on the trailer no more. Y'all see, I put a little clip in here. Uh, from when uh, I got robbed one night 
this is back, I don't know, probably five or six years ago. Uh, and the, somebody came up and the floodlight came on and everything and they didn't even phase them. They had a hoodie on. I couldn't really see who it was or, you know, you couldn't identify them. I had just installed cameras. And I don't, I mean, it sure was funny how I just installed cameras. And then, you know, just a couple of weeks after I installed the cameras around the house, uh, this happened. So that prompted me to buy more cameras. So, and higher resolution cameras. So, yeah. But a guy walks up to the trailer, and this is before I had the Green Touch uh, racks. I did have the Green Touch blower rack, but I just left all that, you know, all the stuff, you know, backed up in my driveway on the trailer. Well, I never do that again, man. Uh, though. My homeowner's insurance ended up paying for it. It was still a hassle. And the police never never found out who did it. I think it was some some uh, people renting a house that was a couple doors down. Because that's what made me get the cameras to begin with. Because there's a lot of traffic over there and a lot of young young kids. I call kids, you know, 25 and under. Uh, partying all night long and everything. So... I started getting a little bit paranoid and you know but I did have the video of the I did have the video of what of what, of what y'all saw and to show the police and my insurance company so I was able to you know get some of the some of the money back uh, but the audacity and boldness uh, you know to walk up to a trailer like that and the floodlight come on and not even phase them I mean didn't spook them or nothing you know that was just unnerving for me man but I was just wondering what you guys do you know uh, all right y'all so good morning uh well it's Friday morning it's sprinkling just a little bit I got a property I need to do uh, today or this morning right now it's right up the street here it's about three miles from here and uh but it's it, it's starting to sprinkle uh in the haste of this week i i just didn't i i, I don't know how i missed this one man my software didn't move it uh didn't move it down from two weeks ago so i don't know uh, but I want to go on and I want to try to knock it out this morning real quick uh, by myself. Uh, today's payday. I got Zach's check. He'll have to call me or something. Uh, I don't know. He'll probably come by and get his check later. Uh, I called Zach to see if he had if he had helped me with this one real quick, uh, and I'd bring him his check. But I ain't heard back from him. So you know, and he nobody. Uh, we, we didn't intend to work today. Today was a scheduled day not to work. So, you know, uh, so I'm just hoping that I can uh, do this one before the bottom falls out. I don't think it's going to rain hard or long or nothing. I just think it's going to, it's going to uh, rain probably, it probably, it looks like it's going to rain for an hour or so. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be this kind of rain that we're getting, that you're seeing right now, or a downpour. You can't never tell uh, out here. So, yeah. But y'all see, I'm ready. I'm ready. We're gonna, I'm going to do this one property. It's going to have to be pouring down raining for me not to do this property. So, uh, again, I could be sitting on the couch, you know, watching some stupid movie or something. But, uh, no, that ain't how I roll, man. I want to get this one out of the way, man, because, uh, uh, so tomorrow, uh, I can, uh, do some bobcat work. And I may take the bobcat over there today to dig out some more stumps. I'm just not sure yet. Let's see how much rain we get. Because if it's real, real, real wet, sloppy, I don't like to put the bobcat.
cut in that crap. I'm not worried about getting stuck or nothing. I just, you know, I don't like working in mud, man. You know, and I don't get nearly as good. I mean, I get grip, but I don't get nearly as good a grip, uh, you know. Get over here and get this one done. I should have left about 20 minutes ago. There's a couple things that I wanted to mention today uh, before I forget. So the, uh, you know, I got some comments in, uh, about the speed feed and I'm gonna get one of the 400s and I'm gonna try it out just because. But also uh, the old man in the comments was telling me about you stick a bolt through there and that makes sense to me too. Uh, I can go buy a number eight bolt and drill a hole through it, stick a bolt a bolt in there and tighten it down from the inside. Oh my God, that would be that would be pretty good too. But I've been wanting to try the uh, the speed feed uh, anyway. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not worried about how much how much the speed feed costs. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know what they cost there. You know, I'm out here making money every day, so you know, I like to try different stuff. So I just got. Uh, so I could be informed, you know, and just kind of know. And, you know, I've, I've been wanting to try the speed feed for a while, um, but I'm definitely going to do, I'm going to do both. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a, some bolt heads in the, in, the, in the buttons on the steel stuff that I got now. And I got extra buttons too, you know. I don't just have, I got a bunch of buttons, man. Buttons are, are the things that I call that you that hit the ground. And if you put a bolt head through there, I can see those things lasting longer. But this property down here is a real easy one. And, uh, well, I'd have to knock it out pretty, pretty easy. You know, I can, I know, I know I can do it by myself. I'm not even worried about that. I've done it a hundred times by myself. Not much to weed eat over here. It's mainly just get on and get it. You know, I got the weed eater on the mower and get this mower going over here. And then I can, you know, I just want to get the main cutting done. Then I could jump off the mower and weed eat what little needs weed eating. Just enough rain here to, to make you be on the fence about working or not. But it's enough rain here to keep the dust down for sure. So, but you see how all that planning this week and us overkilling on the last two days, you know, saved our saved the week. You know. Because if we had to do all those properties that we would normally do on on Friday, on today, we wouldn't be able to do them. And then what? Then we got to go on Saturday. Well, then when you start going on Saturday, a lot of those properties you can't even go in. You can't even get into the gated community on Saturday if you're a contractor. Uh, those two big ones over there, uh, where the pool I showed you yesterday, you can't even go in there uh, on the weekend pulling a trailer. I don't know if you got to have special permission or what. They will not let you in the gate if you're a contractor. So, yeah. Uh, you might be able to get special permission. A homeowner might be able to, you know. But uh, a lot. Of, I, I've been over there on a Saturday morning, and them not let me in. And then if I pulled in, you know, without a trailer, you could probably go in, you know. But pulling a trailer and stuff, they wouldn't let me in. But I'm gonna have to go back out to the steel dealer today to get a belt for the damn skag, man. Ugh. That damn belt ought to be on the warranty, man. This guy ain't even got 130 hours on it. I think what happened was uh, it had the wet grass on it, and I, I bumped it, you know, like I do the X marks, and I've been doing it for years and years. And I think the spring, the tension spring on the deck, popped off when I bumped it. You know, because I just, you know, rear up and, and knock the grass off the deck, you know, and sometimes when I'm in the middle of a yard because it gets so wet and so know and I think the spring popped off but right after that is when it, 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 I engaged the blades and, I, and probably I don't know for sure <clears throat> but probably when I engaged the blades after the spring came off it cut the belt I, I, I don't know I really don't know how the belt broke to be honest but before I put a new belt on there I'm gonna check out before I go over there and get the belt uh, I'm gonna check all the pulleys and everything to make sure that it ain't a, a malfunctioning pulley. 
I don't think it is because the spring came off. The spring was laying in the uh, was laying on top of the deck and not hooking nothing. Now I've never I've had that mower, you know I've never even changed the blades on that mower, y'all. So uh, though I am liking it more now than what I did to begin with. It's an, it, it's a it's a good little mower. Uh, like for that last property we did, it would have been a, a better machine to put on that last property we did yesterday than the X Mar. Though the X Mar is cut better. Uh, backwards and x marks are more powerful they throw the grass further but they do not disperse the grass like the skag the skag disperses the grass really good i left her a message last night but if you call her at eight o'clock at night she's already in bed she says don't call me you know you know after after seven or something at night so it's, it's not normal all right y'all i gotta get to this one man peace out all right, y'all. So I got done with that one. I, it, 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 it did sprinkle the whole time I was here, but I was able to get that one done. And, uh, this is a, this is a 60. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever had you guys over. I know I probably haven't ever had you guys over here on the mower or nothing, but, uh, I'm going to stick the camera out the window and show you guys. It's this one right here. I think I have had you guys over here. This is the one where, uh, she liked the way I did the bushes of uh, that time. Uh, but you see, it's done inside and out, you know, inside the backyard, everything. Uh, so I'm glad to get it done big time. Big time. It took me, you know, less than 30 minutes in this wet. And it looks really good, too. Uh, so I just looked up, I just happened to look up from two weeks on the monthly view of the calendar and it shows you know maybe i'll do a video on the software and kind of show you guys uh some of the stuff that it does uh no way i could keep up with all of this uh you know without the software man well i wouldn't want to man you know you don't have to uh because that's time not unless you're gonna you know hire an assistant or something and i'm not gonna hire nobody to run the books or nothing i gotta be in charge of the books yeah I gotta be in charge of accounts receivable, accounts payable, collections, scheduling, management, equipment, overseer, all that, man. One of my customers asked me yesterday if I had an admin person, you know, and it's a, uh, and I said, no, man, uh, I, I don't have one. Uh, he said, man, you do a lot of, you have to do a lot of paperwork, don't you? And you do have to do a pretty good bit of paperwork, you know. Uh, and a lot of the stuff I don't talk about on here because it seems kind of boring, but it's mandatory that you have to do a lot of these things. You know, you have to have insurance, and you have to have workman's comp, and you have to have all these things. And workman's comp costs a lot of money, too. So, uh, yeah. So, I had a guy comment the other day when I did that yard, and I, bumped, and I, and I called her, the lady, and I told her I was going to have to bump it up a little bit, you know, and she'd be okay with that. And the guy came in the comments and said, man, I can't believe that you're going to uh, charge her $25 more. She's been your customer for 10 years. Dude, I'm out here to make money, man. I'm not out here to let these customers go a month without me coming. And I've been proactive in trying to get over there. And she's been putting me off because of this or that project going on, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Why should I spend twice as long on a on a on a regular lawn maintenance uh and charge the same money why would i do that if i don't have to i ain't saying i wouldn't have done i would have done the property probably anyway because i you know but i know that what i was asking her was fair so you know you got to keep your eye on the ball on what's fair and what ain't fair and then if i went over there and i told her well yeah uh, 150 bucks you know on a on a on a fifty or sixty dollar lawn, if I told her one hundred and fifty bucks, well, then that would have been a little bit different. Then I'm seizing and taking advantage of the situation, uh, but I don't do that. And that's why my customers don't mind bumping it. Yesterday in the video, yesterday you guys heard me talking about the spray, and I was going to charge a customer. I didn't really, I didn't really explain what what we were, me and Zach were talking about. But what I was talking about was the property that we did that's empty that the people are over in Pakistan 
and they've been over there for you know six or well, they, hell they've been over there for about nine months now uh, ever since last summer in the last summer and uh, i don't know if they're ever coming back nice house you know but what what i do on those properties like that is i spray them and i've been spraying that one a little bit by little bit by little bit but with all the rain that we've had the last couple of weeks since the last time i was there and i do it every two weeks that that property uh uh well the weeds are going crazy over there and normally i just spray a little bit a little bit a little bit you know but i've been spraying a little bit a little bit a little bit and uh you know and i'm not i'm not getting any money for it so yesterday i did the same thing i sprayed a little bit a little bit a little bit and kind of you know in the cracks and trying to you know because as long as it's really hot 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 you know the believe it or not i know some people might think i'm crazy but the grass really don't grow that hardcore when it's when it's 95 degrees out here and we ain't had no rain or nothing the grass don't grow the weeds don't grow that heavy but but if you dump two days of rain and on there and then all those weeds come up and there are they are far and deep man so that's what me and Zach were talking about yesterday when I was talking about the twenty dollars. I had already sprayed the property, and I was gonna—I I mean, while we were there, I tried to call him, but he didn't answer. So I was already there. I saw how bad the weeds were. I took it upon myself to spray. Now I uh, and and I and my intention was to get him to pay more money, you know, twenty more dollars or something, you know, just just a token, really, uh, compared to what I have done over the t over time spraying. So yeah, I never charge him because I always just save time. I don't have to weed eat empty property i can spray everywhere i don't have to weed eat wah 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 you know i don't even have to get off the mower over there uh, other than to blow off so that's what me and zach was talking about and i did talk to him and he did send me an additional he, he venmoed me uh that's a that's a that's a 50 dollar yard and he did and he venmoed me 70. so you know uh and but i went on and sprayed before i ever even asked him you know about more money if you have if you had said no i can't afford it then then we wouldn't have i wouldn't have uh, I, I wouldn't have been upset or nothing it, i would have been well okay but i would have known that i sprayed it and i would have been saving time because spraying is twofold spraying makes the yard look better keeps the weeds out of the cracks and the beds and spraying also on on certain properties spraying also eliminates weed eating i'm talking about eliminates weed eating not just a little bit but eliminates it uh, on certain properties now you can't do that on every property because you know uh people uh but on empty properties and rentals and things like that where they're empty uh i that's what i do and that's to keep my number friendly i have to weed eat every crook and cranny every single time and this time of year with all the rain all the weeds coming through like that there ain't no freaking way man no way bro no way man so yeah Another thing that I'm probably going to end up doing, y'all, since I'm obviously going to have to keep the skag uh, for at least uh, this season and uh, and po possibly even next season because I don't use it every day, but it does help me, you know, minimize the hours on the other machines. So that's one thing I have noticed having that having that third machine having that third machine out here with us really helps with the hours on the main machines that i use and y'all know i use the export machines mainly but i am learning the skag and, and and what scenario to put it in another thing that i'm going to be doing since i'm going to be keeping the skag is i'm going to get twill tires uh for uh the other x mark that drew runs now there's twills on it now but those twills came with the skag so i'll put those twills back on the skag and I will put the the X Mark tractor tires or whatever the twill tire tires size is that goes on the X Mark factory is what I will put back on there. See the twill tires on Drew's mower is, are uh, are 26 or 26 inches, and see it need to be 24 because ever since I put them twill tires on there, it's kind of uh, screwed the cutting height and everything up. Uh, like if I'm cutting, you know, and a lot of times I don't know what setting to tell him to put it on because I don't really use that mower. And so 
that's created a little bit more com uh, confusion than necessary you know and when you got guys working for you and they're new out here and they don't really uh uh, you know, haven't been doing this for a long time, you know, I don't want to confuse them any more than what they already are. You know, there's enough stuff to be confused about already, especially with me, because I'm always changing my freaking mind. And I'm always pushing the script on, you know, to try to get more efficient. But the guy came in the comments and was saying, you know, that I was, you know, that I, be, that I must need the money bad. Dude, it ain't about, dude, do I look like I need $25 bad? I mean, I mean, for somebody to say that to me, you know, and, and, and be serious, you sound, you sound freaking stupid, you know, I'm in, I'm in business, man, business, business, I'm in business to make profit, I'm not in business to, to labor in folks yard for twice as long for the same money, I ain't gonna do it, and you can do it, and let's see how long you last. You can do that and and uh, and and uh, keep running with your tractor mowers and all that. You can do it like that, but I ain't gonna do that. I got big boy equipment to pay for, and I want all the money that I can get out here, unless I feel like it's not fair for me to do that. And that's the thing about being self-employed. If I don't feel like it, I don't do it. If I feel like it's fair and justifiable, then I'm gonna do it because that I've been doing this for 15 years man so that should qualify me to if it was some little old lady that simply didn't have the money that couldn't afford it then I will make that determination at that time but uh that lady over there she's got plenty of money and let's so let's let's save the goodwill stuff for the people that really ain't got no money I ain't doing goodwill for people that's got she's got like nine rental properties man I'm not being goodwill for that. She can pay me, you know. It's only fair. Let's let, uh, let, let's save up for the the goodwill gestures and the goodwill stuff to where we can do things uh, really cheap for people that can't do it, man. For people that are really in a financial struggle, not for somebody that's probably a millionaire or really close to it, uh, you know. So I mean, she drives a damn a hundred thousand dollar car, you know. So. I'm just saying, man, don't come in the comments being stupid, man, or not knowing what the hell you're talking about, you know. Untypical video, y'all. Anyway, I'll kick back with y'all, man. Peace out.